facilities and states uh, have now been released. It's a 17 page report by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, a team there entitled Guidance for Implementing the Reopening of America Framework. Uh, it was researched and written to help faith leaders, business owners, educators, state and local officials as they begin to reopen. And joining us now to discuss uh, is our chief medical editor, Dr. Corey Aber. Good to see you again, doctor. And uh, you as well, you as well. Thank you. And tell us what what is this report all about, and what does it mean, and what are its implications? Well, you know, I, I think the report is awesome. It, it tells you line by line what really you're supposed to be doing. The problem is that the White House decided that they didn't really want to use this and they shelved it. And what that means is that they decided that they wanted to use um, their own um, documents and their own information, But and that's very disappointing. And the reason why it's disappointing, Fred, is because when you start looking at the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the United States, this organization is the beacon for all other uh, countries and, and all other municipalities for and states across just across this country to, to be able to look to them and say this is what we should do this is what we should use this is how we should do it because it is it is a, a an organization that don't get me wrong it's not perfect okay but what it is is that they do that the, they research the data to give you information based on fact and that's what they do. And so, you know, I was actually doing a Facebook Live a little earlier today, and somebody said the CDC, they're not the perfect, they're not uh, gods, and I, I agree with that. But I would much, much rather trust the CDC on reopening and being uh, nonpartisan than I would the White House on reopening. You know, you know what I mean? And I think that as, Af as African Americans, as we are dying at higher rates than anybody else, we should have at least known at first that this was actually there before we just automatically just started listening uh, to these uh, reopening plans that none of us agree with, that are not based in science. Well, and, and the other thing about it, Dr. Ray Bear, is when you look at this reopening process, you get the feeling just walking around, I don't know about New Orleans, but here in Florida, just walking around and you, you go to the supermarket, you're driving down the street, you see people walking in and out of Starbucks, and it's as though n nothing ever happened and this thing is gone. How big a mistake is that to assume such a thing? It's a big mistake, and I'm really concerned about Mother's Day uh, because, you know, the worst part about this is that Mother's Day, we know that the mothers, grandmothers, you know, great-grandmothers are going to be celebrating Mother's Day, and they are going to be the most at risk for dying from COVID-19, but we are opening up things, and now people are going to want to, because it looks like everything is going to be reopened, that people are going to go and spend time with their grandmothers, and then it's going to be young children and, and older adults, and then six months later, you know, we're going to realize that we looked at the numbers of just elderly people and we see that they that the numbers spike during uh you know two weeks later after um uh, mother's day uh we have to have some type of guideline and and when you let states do this everybody has their very uh, uh selfish reasons as to why they want to reopen and like i've said before on this program but public health is a four-legged stool you got public outcry you got economics you got politics and you got science and science should lead but really, right now, what's leading is public outcry. You see all these militia groups going up to Michigan. You see all these people saying, I want to be able to get a haircut. I want to be able to do all these things. That's public outcry. And, 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 and that's the pressure that the public is putting on governments, either whether it's state, local, or federal, putting that pressure on them to do something really when we really should be pulling back a little bit. Hmm. And, and we talk a lot about the uh, elder population. We know that... Uh, older folks are vulnerable. Uh, nursing home figures of, of fatalities are just tragic to see. But now there's this new thing that's presenting in children, especially in New York. Can you tell us about this malady? Yes. Okay. So we know that children have really we've been calling them super spreaders because they don't really get this virus and get really ill. But in New York, as we know, as New York goes, the rest of the country goes because there's a study that came out to show that New York really was the nidus for the uh, eastern part of the United States because New Yorkers travel so much and they're so you know uh, in, in close contact that as New Yorkers got exposed and went across the, the country as they do all the time. And like I said, I, you know, I, I've lived in New York for a while myself um, and it's no crack on New York. We love New York. New York 
New York's strong, right? But you travel a lot, so it's spread throughout the country. So as as children start to develop this toxic shock type syndrome, where it's like a Kawasaki's disease for children, which is a, not a common thing, but not very rare. Um, it's like you you get these little COVID toes you've heard about, where they're kind of purplish, but also you get uh, lymphadenopathy, high rash. Lymphadenopathy is your lymph node swelling or your gland swelling. You get a, a rash. You get high fever, and also you get um, these um, uh, scaling and, and peeling of the hands and feet. And when that happens, then you know the children aren't dying, but they're getting really ill, and then becoming and then having pneumonia. So if you have a child out there, I know we've been telling you, you know, don't worry about it. The child, children can't get sick, but children can get sick. So if you start seeing those symptoms, and your child has a high fever and difficulty breathing. Don't think that they can't get it. They need to be seen by a doctor at an emergency facility at any time. They can't if they can't breathe and they have a high fever. And, and one more thing before we go tonight, doctor. Um, and we always have so much to talk about. We could talk for an hour. Sure. But um, military recruits. There's a Pentagon report that has been discovered by the press, leaked to the press, whatever it happens to be, that cadets who have had COVID-19 or have been proven to have had it will not be accepted into the military. How much of that is a mixed message to what we're getting from our politicians in Washington? Yeah, that, that, that's a real mixed message. And the reason why is because if you get this, this disease, and you shed it for 30 days, 40 days, and then it's over, it's over. It, it's, just, it, it's over. I mean, it's just like banning somebody from the military if they who's ever had the flu. That, that, so I'm, I, there, there's something else at play here, and I, I think what we may be missing is that they're saying if you – you know, if you test and, and and you are negative, then you still could actually be positive because of the false negative rate of that test. I could get that. I understand that because it's a 15 percent, meaning every 15 people that 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 uh, out of 100 that test, if there would be positive, their test would be negative. OK, so that's a big percentage. But the point is that it doesn't make any sense. So to try to make sense out of it with the information we have. We can't make sense out of it because this is a viral infection that should be gone once it's gone. And and, and I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but I'm sure we're going to find out. <laughs> yeah, indeed. All right, Doctor, yes. we'll talk to you again uh, tomorrow very, very soon. Please be safe over in the Big Easy. And thank you, you again too. for joining us. Thank you. All right, Dr. Corey A. Bear in New Orleans.